That's why you want to try anyway. If you think that you have some of the relevant skills, try anyway. If you think that you can figure it out later, you can learn, you can go through and watch a YouTube video about it, try anyway. Hey there and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now my goal is that after this video is to walk you through what are different things that you can do as you're becoming a virtual assistant. Now if this is your first time on my channel, my name is Dian Laila Kaba. I've been working from home since I was 15 years old and now run my own virtual assistant company here in the Philippines. And I post videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and how to have a business from home. So make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos. Now when you're becoming a virtual assistant, there's a lot of unknown no, especially if you don't have experience, if you don't have anyone else to ask, which is why I've created this whole YouTube channel is to hopefully walk you through that whole process of becoming one. But sometimes when you are in that startup phase, when there's a little bit of less motivation because you now see all of the work that has to be done, I have a few tips for you as you start on your journey, as you keep continuing on, as you're studying, as you're learning, and as you're trying to get that first client. Now, the first piece of advice that I have for you is to try anyways. Now, I know this sounds a little bit general, so I'll go with specific. So when you are applying for jobs and you see all of these qualifications, you see all of these requirements, and you might get a little bit intimidated of like, they'll just reject you outright. Don't reject yourself. This is something that I have learned myself, especially as I started out to exceed my virtual assistant company, that you can't reject yourself before the other person has a chance to reject you. That's why you want to try anyway. If you think that you have some of the relevant skills, try anyway. If you think that you can figure it out later, you can learn, you can go through and watch a YouTube video about it, try anyways. If you are just too intimidated or scared, nothing will really move forward and it really won't hurt you if you do try for it and get rejected. That's just now a notch on your belt. Now it's not just something that you can then move forward and not keep wondering like, hey, what if I applied for that job? So try anyways, because you never know if that employer actually needs someone who's not super experienced so then they can work with you, they can work with your systems. So just try anyway when it comes to applying for a job, especially if you are a woman. And this is a funny statistic that I found a few months, a few years ago, so I don't really remember the specifics, but women only usually apply to jobs if they have eight out of the 10 qualifications, but men apply even if they only have two out of the 10. So try any ways to apply for the job so you can really keep pushing for you to get it. And don't be afraid to not know anything. Don't be afraid to be a blank slate. You never know again if you can learn from this, if this is something that you can specialize in, something that you can keep going because you only really fail if you've never really tried. So keep going and try anyways. The second piece of advice that I have for you is to track your clients or the places that you apply for. Now, this is something that I have reiterated a lot or said a lot because tracking is something that not a lot of people do, which then you will fail in like following up and making sure that you've closed the loop in some people. So track your clients mean that as you're applying for jobs, track the people that you're applying for. That way you can follow up with them. And if they're already your clients, track the tasks that you're doing for them, the projects, have some sort of documentation because this will help you become a virtual assistant when you track things as you go along. When you're not letting things go through the cracks, when you're not letting just a day go by, you're actually tracking the things you're getting done and things you need to get done. And of course, again, tracking the things that you need to follow up to kind of see through till the end. Next tip is again, connected to that one, it was just the power of following up because a lot of the time for me as an employer, your email might have just been marked red. Your email might have just gotten to spam, sadly. So following up after three days of not hearing from a potential client or even a client is gonna be so powerful for you because you're just bumping the email so then they see it first. So an email follow-up could be an easy of, hey, did you see this? Or hey, I'd like to follow up on my application because you never know if your email is the first thing that they see right off the bat because you actually made the effort to follow up. This also comes to it of following up when you have questions that they haven't been able to answer so then you can get 
clarity. It's really important that as a virtual assistant, you're able to give clarity and receive clarity from your client. Next is then look at your skills or track the skills you currently have. It's really important that you are aware of what are the different things that you can do for your client. So keeping a list of all the things that you can do is really important. Now I have so many videos on here on my channel on like 20 plus skills you can do as a virtual assistant, you know, all the basic virtual assistant skills. I have so many videos on here, so I'm not going to go into that, but it's really important that you track what are the different things that you can do because then as you are getting interviews, as you are exposing yourself as a virtual assistant, trying to get jobs, you can state these of like, oh, these are different things that I can do, or these are different things that I have learned. So then you have this track record of everything else that they can start delegating to you, the things that you already know how to do. It's gonna be easier for you to jumpstart yourself. Now, speaking of your skills, always be upgrading yourself whether that's upgrading your marketing skills your social media skills your writing skills your virtual assistant skills or your soft skills when it comes to being a better communicator being able to lead projects lead other people when it comes to tracking your tasks always keep in mind that there's going to be two sides of that of the hard skills and the soft skills and you need to keep upgrading and working on both there's a lot of free courses and a lot of youtube videos like this one out there where you can start upgrading yourself in small and significant ways so make sure that you are always learning you're always growing your own skills so then you can go to the next tip that i have for you which is make sure that you're pricing yourself right now i've never really done a full pricing video on my youtube channel i have i think a few that you can check out but it's mostly because it's always going to be different for different markets and for different people for example here in the philippines a good wage is about 600 dollars and above but for some countries it's a thousand dollars for $2,000. So try to make sure that you price your skills in the right way that will help you sustain your life and of course grow beyond that. As a virtual assistant agency owner, I price things not just based on the work that needs to get done but also making sure that I have a little bit for growth so I can add into my business. So you always want to think of that of like beyond just your expenses, how much budget do you need to keep learning to be able to buy courses? What's how much budget do you need to upgrade your tools? So you can then you're saving up to always work on yourself, your skills, your equipment so you can better serve and work with your client. Next is to make sure that you market your skills. Now I know this can be a little bit nerve-wracking especially if you're a little bit shy especially if you're a little bit new but always talk about the things that you're doing as much as you can. Marketing yourself doesn't always have to be putting in your best self you know putting up a graphic that you made putting up the post that you made it's also talking about the process you know talking about it on Facebook Twitter Instagram on different social media platforms what it is that you do so people are always keeping you in mind. I have so many current clients that I've gotten because I just keep talking about having a virtual assistant agency. I just kept talking about my YouTube channel and I kept talking about how I coach people or how I help a lot of other virtual assistants like you be able to get started. So talk about your skills of what it is that you do so then you can start attracting people who are looking for someone exactly like you. So don't be afraid to start showing your story. You don't have to do videos like I do. You can just start with posts. You can start with sharing your wins online. So try to find little ways that you can start talking about what it is that you do so you can market yourself. You don't have to push. You don't have to ask for referrals. You're only marketing yourself organically. Next thing that you can do is make sure that you are on the major platforms, social media platforms, including LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn has really evolved into being a platform for either finding for jobs or looking for people or staff. So for me, for example, on my LinkedIn, I always post content about 2XU, I always post content about our assistants, what they do, what they do for our clients. So then people are, again, are always aware and keeping me in mind if they start looking for a virtual assistant. So when you are on these different platforms, you can start creating content for it, you can start marketing yourself. Just please make sure that you choose your platform wisely depending on where your client is at. So I'm always recommending LinkedIn that because that's more most of where professionals and business owners are at. But if your potential clients are in Instagram or on Facebook, then market yourself there. Always focus on where your market is so then they can always keep seeing your posts and you're creating relevant information that'll push them to want to be your client. Next thing that you can do as you're becoming a virtual assistant is just keep upgrading your resume and your cover letter. A lot of the time when I see a resume come in and it's not detailed, it's too generic, it doesn't tell me more about that person, that the chances are I'll pass on that person. But if the person is able to come up with a very position-specific 
resume, then I pay attention. What I mean by position specific resume is when I put out the job ad, they tweak the resume to match who I need. They write out the, the different skills, the different qualifications that they feel is relevant to the job ad that I wrote out. So always upgrade your resume and with it, when it comes to your cover letter, make sure that you're stating what it is that you're applying for and how you can help them. Keep in mind that when you're writing a cover letter or application letter that it should be a reply or a response to the original job ad. So start thinking in this way what are different ways that you can differentiate yourself as you're applying for jobs. Now the biggest piece of advice that I can give you is to show up, follow up, and stand out. So show up is make sure that you're showing up on these different platforms that your potential client might be there. Follow up is making sure you follow up with them. I already said this before in this video, but make sure that you follow up because you might your email might have just gotten lost or they forgot or they open your email without meaning to on their phone and now you're in their red section so make sure they always follow up and stand out is basically just keep upgrading yourself in some way a lot of people when they start becoming a virtual assistant they get intimidated they back out or they feel that this is it so when you're constantly upgrading yourself and you're working on how to stand out you are also working and investing in future you becoming a virtual assistant who can help a lot of really good clients get to where they need to be in their business so don't be shy keep showing up keep showing off and you will see a lot of results come in as you start becoming a person who can show up for interviews in the right way can show up for application jobs or for work in the best way becoming a virtual assistant doesn't have to be this big scary thing you just have to start with one client and then you can keep growing and going and even before then you can keep studying and go through all of the videos that i have on my youtube channel and, and a lot of other really great resources for free you don't have to pay for it as long as you keep growing yourself now if you guys like this video make sure to hit the thumbs up button right there and comment below what other tips do you have for someone else who's getting started on this journey and if you still haven't yet make sure to hit subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos every sunday and thursday on how to work from home and how to have a business from home which you guys can check out those two playlists right here and the latest video right here i hope you guys have an awesome day and the smallest steps matters and i'll see you in the next video bye